We know more about the surface of the moon than we know what's under the canopy of our forests. We estimate that we have one trillion species on planet Earth, of which we know less than 1%. And this is how we currently do business with nature. Deforestation, climate change, and human activity are causing the sixth mass extinction on planet Earth. Zach and I decided to change that. We are tapping to Mother Nature's ingenuity by digitizing biological and genetic diversity. Through different spatial scales, we're extracting data in a, in a way never done before, through satellite imagery, aeros, aerial survey, drones, multispectral sensors, and genetic sampling. We're building a multi-scale bioinformatics platform. Interconnecting the different spatial scales, we're building the tools to do that. And the three verticals of technology we're using is computer vision, artificial intelligence, and remote sensing. The first generation of our software, Biomap, is going to account for fauna and flora surveys, invasive species detection, change detection, and that, that alone would change how we do conservation, and carbon storage est estimates, which will impact our carbon markets. The second generation of Biomap will allow us to use hyperspectrum data, which will allow us to go at the individual scale and identify different species as well as identifying different communities of microbial consortia and help us with genetic diversity discoveries. We'll be able to understand ecosystem dynamics like never done before. We're developing a global scale model where we account for climate data and ecosystem condition, delivering ecosystem risk. We're also working with the US Forest Service to identify a particular pest that can completely destroy agricultural activity in Pennsylvania. It's a statewide project. They were, um, already have successfully uh, worked the uh, detectors and it's underway. Um, for instance, with the fall army worm, we're competing now on this uh, tech prize of building an alarm system for uh, the country of Kenya to detect this particular caterpillar. At the species identification level, we are testing hyperspectrum, the use of hyperspectrum data and computer vision to extract the precise spectral signatures and geometries at the leaf level. With microbial consortia, also hyperspectrum opens up a lot of possibilities. With enough training data, it's even possible to look at microbial communities in an urban environment, which could be very um, interesting or pre for preventing um, problems in human health. We're currently working with the Brazilian government and the University of Sao Paulo and SOS Mata Atlantica to collect eDNA in large scale. Serving this data to the scientific community could accelerate innovation into society. And distributing this information across the world could be extremely powerful. So we're creating an open global bioinformatics platform to serve and to cater to scientists and serve like a genome web service, allowing scientific community to extract the innovation out of this data. However, securing this digital information is very important, not just because of the intellectual property, but this DNA that is extracted from the environment primarily belongs to the local communities. Blockchain and smart contracts can secure that these Discoveries and royalties are driven back to the communities, driving these royalties back to traditional communities, giving them an opportunity to partake of a new economy of abundance, where they will have an option instead participating of an economy of scarceness. Slash and burn animal poaching and deforestation are not the only economic drivers that these people could sustain their families with. Identifying species and finding a purpose for them in the industry today is extremely powerful and underutilized. We intend to change that, creating a circle of abundance. The digital transformation and the tools that are available today are making this possible. And we so call it the fourth industrial revolution. However, when we look at what would 
the fifth industrial revolution look like? It's not going to be only digital. It's also going to be biological. And we like to think that what we're doing is paving the way to get us there. <laughs>